Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, February the 27th, 2019, and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, and hopefully the uh, connection here will be nice and clear. We have a storm here, and uh, Jim could be having the storm come his way as well, so Thank you. hopefully there won't be any issues with our connection. Um, so I do want to talk about uh, CVNA, AVGR, MTNB, TLRA, and I want to talk about the SPY. Really just explain a little bit. People messaged about the SPY. They want to understand what is the SPY? Why does everyone talk about the SPY? So I thought it was important to just briefly explain what is the SPY, what's included in the SPY, in terms of what companies are in the SPY, and uh, hopefully shed some light and help people better understand so that when people talk about the SPY, you'll understand it as well. So let's first start with CVNA. This is called Carvana Company. And Carvana Company had their earnings today after hours. Now, before we get into the earnings information, I will say that I was watching this stock earlier this week. I knew there was going to be some earnings, um, but a couple weeks ago, uh, I was watching, as you guys know, I, I'm trying to help people with smaller accounts as well, and including myself with in terms of options. This is a new experience for me over the last, I guess, three months. And um, I actually um, bought an option call on CVNA for the expiry of March 15 for a $40 call. So at the time, the stock was about, I think it was like $37 or $38. And uh, happy to report that the stock after hours has gone over $45 and I actually saw it go a little higher. So that option call for me, last I checked uh, before the close, was going for $4.90. I actually even saw it going for $600 for the contract. Um, we'll see tomorrow what this really does go for. So if anyone uh, I know from our room got this option call, they're really happy. And hopefully it'll be that way tomorrow. Um, but anyhow, the quarterly results from the company, uh, they did mention that, you know, they are an e-com platform. And it's a service that if you go online, you can actually buy used cars uh, from their portal. And um, you can also um, do many different things with regards to a car. So they are have very strong growth. This is their 20th, 20th consecutive quarter of triple digit revenue and also revenue growth. They are the fastest growing public auto retailer in the country is what the Ernie Garcia was mentioned, who's the founder and CEO of the company. And they're very confident that they're going to sell 2 million cars this year. I mean, that's just insane. Um, the other thing I noticed too, is they filed an 8k tonight and I'm like, let me take a look what's going on here. And I saw that they gave themselves a very generous salary increase. Now, Mr. Garcia, the third, who's the founder, he, he gave himself an increase, get this from $400,000 a year. He jacked himself up to 885,000. The CFO is going from 375 to 735. And the COO from the same the same amount, like to seven thirty five, and I'm like, wow, talk about getting a juicy, juicy salary increase. That's amazing. So keep the stock on watch. I'd love Jim to talk about the chart. Um, I think this will have an effect on another ticker that has earnings tomorrow, which is a company called C A R G. And for those of you listening, that option I paid a dollar twenty for that call for a $45 strike. It's up a little bit to around $1.40 right now, but I believe that if this earnings holds up tomorrow uh, with the market open, it could have a little bit of an effect on the other ticker uh, on CARG. So Jim, let's hear about the VNA's chart, please. Well, we had a year high of this thing at 72.59. So we were at a bottom here on this chart a couple months ago when we had that bad December down here right around 2960 and we touched down there about oh, two weeks ago we touched back down to that support level at 2960 
So in two weeks later, we have a new high on this thing at 47.86. And I'm looking at the chart here, and I'm trying to find some support levels, and I'm drawing them up here for you as, as we speak. I see one right about in here. I see another one right about here. And I'm going to put a lower support right down here on the 50 SMA on a year chart at 34.60 with a probably one right in here. So I'm, as I'm drawing these up, I'm looking for previous balances on the candles, on the base of the candles to find the supports and resistances. And then I'm going to go up here to the last previous high that we had. It's around 46.96. And then another one right in here, and I'm going to raise it up just a little bit to this level right here at 48.80. So there's your year's chart, how I drew them up. The 50 SMA starting to curl up. I noticed that the 100's crossing down, but the 200 keeps squeezing up, and we hit that after hours. So I'm going to pull this up to 20 day now, see if I missed anything. It don't look like I did. Looks like everything's pretty well tendered there. Maybe right here I could add me a little support area at 39.72, which we were at today. It did pull back after hours to that 36.52 level, which we hit my support here at 36.95. So we're going to bring this up now to a 10-day, 30-minute. I'm just going to have a little look at it. It looks fine to me. We're going to bring it up to a one day so I can tell you about where we're going to go with this thing. And I'll look at a three minute. I see a trend line I want to put right here. Right at that 41.99 after hours. We had that little pullback there. So what I'm looking at now is I do believe this stock's going to run up more. Well, the sales were good. The sales were great on it. I'm going to definitely have this on watch. We did have a high up here at 47.86, so that's going to be the resistance we need to break tomorrow. Now, if this does pull back, I think this level right in here, this um, 43.31, will be a good support area. We're at 45 right now, even, $45. It did close at 41.82, and that's right down here on the second support that I have, or the third which is right down here at 41.83. So that's going to be a support level. And then you got another one right here when we broke out this morning, which was right around 42.77. So this is how I look at it. If we can go ahead and pull back a little bit to this one support level at 43.43, that's where I want it to hold, this 43.41 area, 43.43. If we can get that to hold and bounce back up, I think Miss Vegas is going to have her good little trade on here. It did pull back, which usually most stocks do pull back at earnings, and it bounced right back up to, to a great high of 47.86. So if we move on up, we got to break that resistance at 47.86 and move on up. Now, again, I want you to look at this year's chart. <clears throat> this year chart had a 72.59 high on it. So I'm telling you, this thing's just now starting to work out of the pivot point on a yearly chart which is right around 42.98. We hit that first resistance right around 45. That's where we are now. 47 was right about in here, 47.86. So it did hit that high, <clears throat> that high right there. And if we can break this last high up here at 48.80, I think we're off to the races. We're, if not, it can pull back a little bit. And I'm going to put another resistance line right here at 51.15 for target for Miss Vegas come come here tomorrow or some real soon. When does that option expire expire Miss Vegas? Uh March 15. So yeah, we so got uh two really good weeks that we can maybe still try to, you know, be patient and hold it or yeah. may just say tomorrow, you know what? I've done good with it. Just take the money and run, well, you I'm, know. I'm very excited. Yeah, you could take your money and run maybe if it pulls back or starts you, but I think it, it won't pull back no more than 43.40. Oh, so that that's, sounds exciting. Yeah, that's where you want to keep it. That's where it wants to stay and bounce back up and then probably play in this new channel here and then break out of it eventually at 47.86. So that's CVNA, and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be MTNB.
Okay, so MTNB. Well, this company is quite interesting to me. So, you know, we've been looking at this one really from a swing trade perspective. Um, it did have a, it's, you know, Matness Biopharma Holdings. And, um, you know, this actual stock here, you know, we've been talking about this since it was like 97 cents and kept saying that this is a good swing trade. And today it opened up at 125, went as high as 144. Um, they do have a few things in the pipeline. And um, one of them is their MAT 2203. And that's in a phase one. And then they have another one for MAT 2501. That one's starting in a phase one as well. Um, there was also some information on this company here. Let me just get it. And we have here for their, they have on their team a new expert and he's a cardiovascular expert and his name is Dr. Jerome Jabour. It, oh, that's the CEO, sorry. But he did uh, James name J. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson, right? Yep. So he's brought him on board and he's got an excellent reputation uh formerly you know he was a chief he's going to be the now the chief medical officer and uh he's got a very prominent uh lots of prominent experience he used to work actually as at uh, astrazeneca which you guys know is another pharmaceutical and he was also the vice president of the u.s cardiovascular medical and scientific external relations and uh so he's got a lot of good experience He's also, you know, has 20 years experience as a director of clinical cardiology research in Texas. So this man is going to serve them um, quite well. And uh, he's from Harvard Medical School. And uh, he went there for biology. He's got a, uh, his degree is from Pennsylvania School of Medicine. So this man's very smart. So happy to see that he, they've brought him on board. And I think there's a lot more ahead for this MTNB. So, I mean, if you guys like something that's not fast paced, that you can continue to swing trade, um, definitely MTNB should just be one that, you know, do your own due diligence. And uh, Jim will talk about the chart, but this could be one for, you know, people that can't really day trade and you're looking for something to swing trade. This might be something that might interest you. Uh, of course, you know, just always do your own due diligence and position size accordingly because, you know, some people have already been in this trade from the low, you know, $1 range and now they're starting to, you know, profit. But there is probably room for this to still continue. Um, so, Jim, what are your thoughts on, you know, this this chart? And it's had good volume as well. So we want to probably look to see if there's going to be some form of continuation and where can we experience some potential resistance? Yes, we did reach uh, a resistance high, not a not a total resistance high, but it did form a candle base right here at 141 with a yearly high of 148. So we did bounce off this at a year low of 32 cents. My support level on this is going to be right around 35. So it did have a nice little bounce. It hit up that 148 and pulled back sharply. It bounced again, pulled back sharply. And then it bounced again, it pulled back sharply. So I'm thinking this last time it kind of bounced again and it pulled back, but not as sharp. It held resist, it held support level right around this 93 cents, right under a buck area. And then for the last, since the, the first of the year, she's ran up and then she created that 52 week high right here at 141. So we got really seven more cents to go to break this out. This has had a real nice two-day run. I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. I'm going to look at it again. So you can tell by these two days that it did bounce up pretty good. It was in a channel here between that dollar and that dollar eleven, dollar fifteen area. So what I'm thinking maybe we're going to see on this is going to be a small little pullback on it. I'm not in the stock right yet, but I think I might scalp it. Support level here is at right at 130. I'm going to turn that into a red line because I think that 130 is very important to me for it to hold.
but we've had a real nice bounce on this thing from this level right here at 108 in two days all the way up to 142. So we've got to break the 148 to continue with the year high for a breakout. If not, that'll be a double top on a 52-week channel chart. It can pull back to that 130 area. I don't want it to go any lower than that. If it does, we're going to probably be looking at 118 to 120 right in here for a solid support on this stock. So let's keep an eye out on MTNB. Let's see if it can pull back a little bit and rebound to that 148 level. If not, I've got a 130 support, 125 to about 118 to 120. Them three little different support areas right in there. One, two, and three. And the next one we're going to talk about is AVGR. Yeah, so this, and also just a comment too on MTNB. I mean, we're not very far from the 52 week high of 148. So, I mean, if that, you know, does break, um, that'll have a new 52 week high and it's going to be in a new channel. So, uh, that'll be great for the actual MTNB uh, stock. So even if you're not in the trade, you may want to just keep an eye on it for the actual break of the 52-weeker and then look to take a position uh, on a setup of a new 52-week high because I really like uh, stocks that are creating new 52-week highs for continuation. So AVGR, Avenger Inc. Well, well, well. This company here, quite a nice website. What do you think? I love it. <laughs> you like AVGR? Yes, the website. Nice, nice. Um, so, you know, this company here, they're into Lumi Vascular. Um, I also was reading an article, it's not too long ago, um, I guess earlier in the year. Um, they had an article about late January. And, and uh, the article was really just talking about um, this treatment that they have. And uh, when they do actual surgery, they can actually see inside the arteries with this actual uh, gadget that they have. And it's a non-invasive uh, procedure, and it just gives them a better picture of the arteries, which can help them obviously uh, treat the patient better. And uh, this, is called, this is a technology um, called a, uh, in vascular medicine, um, but it's called Pantheris SV. So it's a, it's a product line that they have and, um, you know, it is, it is to, uh, assist in the treating of lesions in, uh, smaller vessels. So, you know, when you have these arteries are so small, obviously, uh, medical tools to assist in the treatment of vascular disease. So I was noticing that this particular stock, uh, was looking for a breakout and so I did notice it on the chart today, and I was looking at the volume on it as well. And I did mention that you know what this stock looks like, definitely look to break out. And I did alert that, and uh, people were able to trade the stock. And a lot of people, I swing overnight uh, just because I am actually looking for some form of continuation. And I know some people that just traded it, took profits, and they were done with it. Um, so, Jim, what are some thoughts here? Because it's had a nice really nice run today i mean the low of day was at like 51 cents ran all the way to about 67 and uh after hours seems to kind of be holding up around 65 mark yep we had a year high of this thing at 244 it did pull back to 18 cents so we are bouncing off of that from the beginning of the year when we had that bad december again so we've come up quite a bit from that 18 cents and it's been on a green path all the way up. So I'm going to pull up. You see what I'm talking about here? Let me show you. We had a big gap down right here back on uh, October the 29th, November the 1st. We did have a huge gap down all the way from a high of right around 74 all the way down to, to 32 cents. So it must have had some kind of news or something. She did kind of go into the red there and hit that 18, and ever since then, for the last two and a half months, she's bounced back up, and now she's starting to fill that gap. That's very important that we broke to that gap today, and that resistance high from that area. I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart, see if we can get a view of it. Nope, we need to go to a 180 real fast. 
I'm going to magnify it. There we go. Much better. So we did kind of break up to this area right in here, right around 66, 65, 52, which hit that good support level right here, a solid support level, which is now a resistance. And to finish filling up that gap, we need to take her up to about 83.53. You've got a couple resistances on the way. One of them's going to be right around 75, 77, 78, and then at an 83 area. Now I'm going to bring this up to a 20-day chart and show you what kind of run we had today. One day, 20 hour. I'm going to pull it back to, this is a two-day run. Actually, it's ran all the way from 30 cents in 20 days all the way up to 64 so that's a hundred percent gain in 20 days so I wouldn't be surprised if it does consolidate in this area we got to break out that 6573 to go up to the next resistance of 7041 we can pull back to this 5762 area your first supports going to be right there at 6136 so if it does kind of pull back, it's probably the way it's going to do it with a solid third support down here at 5364. So if it does pull at 5364, that should be a pretty place for it to consolidate and bounce back up and create a new channel. So the resistance come tomorrow. If it wants to break out, it's got to break that 6573. Let me pull up the monthly chart on this one more time. Whoop, wrong thing. What have I done here? Pull up the monthly chart here. One month, one day. We've got the different resistances we need to go to. We've got to break that one that I mentioned earlier, 6573. If we do that, we can move on up to 7041, 7557, 7791, up to 8350. And I do not mind if you go ahead and, and freeze this chart and keep it for yourself for resistances and supports this is AVGR and I wish the best of luck to you and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be TLRA all right so Teleria so you know what we've actually talked about this company before and in some previous videos but um, you know this company had their earnings they were up 31 percent year over year they are a software company that manages premium and video advertising. And they had gross profit uh, that was up 20%. Uh, so overall, I think uh, they've ended the year very strong. And um, they represented 33% of revenue for the quarter, which is uh, what Mark Zagorski, their CEO, stated. Um, the thing, too, that I actually liked about the stock is that it had you know a new 52-week high. So I was really interested in the stock, and I mean, I did, I did call it out. However, I have no idea what happened. I mean, I thought it was going to actually go to six and break six dollars, um, and go maybe a, around maybe six ten, and it only went to as high as like five ninety four, five ninety six, and then pulled right back. So I'm not sure what happened there. I was actually looking for this 52 week high to have a continuation. So that kind of surprised me. But at the same time, I still like it. I still like the chart. I like the setup. And uh, would like to hear what Jim has to say on Teleria. It, what it, can you tell us? It, it doesn't surprise me too much because we, we've had a huge run on this thing in four days from $3.32 all the way up to 6 bucks. So in four days, we've gained over almost 100% on this stock in four days. So it's actually had a real nice run when we had a big gap breakout when the earnings came out. And the earnings were real good. So today, it regained uh, exposure off that base candle right there. And, and that was at 485. It didn't go much lower than that base. So that was very positive for this stock. And anything that runs up this high has to kind of consolidate and pull back a little bit. In four days, that's 100% gain. So we're going to pull this down to a 20-day. We're going to look at the 20-day. And you can see what I'm saying. We've actually had a good four-day run on this stock. It Just 20 days ago, this thing was down at 311. 
and then it kind of held this channel very strong for a good two to three weeks and then the last four days it had the breakout expecting into earnings it consolidated on um, Friday or it was that Monday and then Tuesday came out with the earnings and it bounced up and then today was just a beautiful little run from that 483 area it ran from 483 all the way up to six dollars and yes I, I, I'm not disappointed at all on the pullback I think we did pull back right to support here at 556 and then we there's resistance that we're gonna have to break here after hours or tomorrow is gonna be this 569 area and then she'll go ahead and continue on up and break that 596 and I'm gonna draw these trend lines in here I'm gonna pull up the one-day chart and see if I missed anything I don't think I missed a thing right here looks to me like this could be a support area right in here at 543 if it decides to pull back which we are snuggled up against the moving averages and I do respect that it also respected the 50 and just pulled back to that 100 we're still the 50 is above the 100 which is giving it a positive plus that 50 run into my 569 area which is a good solid confirmation that this thing can go ahead and break that 569 and move on up so I'm going to call the resistance that we do have to break if we do go higher is going to be this 592 area you see where the base of that candle is so yes this has had a very beautiful run very respected off the earnings it's been a four-day run it's moved more than hundred percent and so I'm not too disappointed on the pullback at all people are going to take profit and was right into close when it happened I mean from today alone we went from 483 all the way up to 596 that's almost a two dollar and some gain or a dollar dollar something gain on this stock and we did close up high with 85 cents with a 17 percent gain so I do believe that this company is a good company and we will continue and break that 52 week high and I'm gonna pull up the years chart one more time and just have a gander at it I'm gonna go back three years to see if I miss anything we broke a three-year high today That three-year high was right around this area of five bucks so you know I wouldn't be surprised if it pulled back just a little bit more even but I'd like to see it keep that resistance that support level that I talked about previously and that support level can go no lower and I'm gonna add another support level right around I don't want to see it go no lower than 522 it, it'll disrespect the moving averages if it does and I don't want to see that so I think we're going to be okay this 558 is where it needs to stay and I think we'll move on up and break new highs on this stock that's TLRA okay Miss Vegas okay so I just want we're going to talk about the spy in a, in a moment uh, regarding the chart but I did want to just take, you know, a minute. And if, I mean, if you guys already know what the spy is all about, that's fine. You don't have to listen to this part. Uh, that's fine. But I just want to explain it to, you know, I have a lot of newbies that want to know. Uh, and, and so I want to really try to help uh, people understand things a little better. So they call it the spy. And uh, this is based on the standards and poors 500 index, which basically means this is a list of about 500 large and mid cap stocks. And what this actual SPY does is it tracks the performance of the top of those 500 companies because this serves as a benchmark for the equity markets. Okay, we're trading the stocks in the market. It helps to trade, uh, you know, see what's happening across all those stocks under one umbrella. And it basically tracks the financial health and stability of the economy. So this buy, okay, is a basket basically with a whole bunch of stocks, as I mentioned, and they're broken down into different sectors. They're, you know, information technology, um, financial, industrial, utilities, real estate, telecommunications, energy stocks. And they also have a committee that decides which ones go in here. And it's a small committee. I think it's only like 12 people. And they are the ones that get together and they pick the ones that go into this standards and poor known as a spy basket. 
okay? And, um, you know, some of the stocks that are in here are Amazon and Berkshire Hathaway, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, Google, Alphabet, JP Morgan, like all these big companies are in here. And I'm just naming just a small few. So whenever people are, you know, watching the spy and they're going, okay, this stock's doing well, this stock's not doing well. You have to also say what is triggering the action. So let's just say that, you know, let's just say that Apple had a really bad earnings report that could affect the spy because Apple is one of the, is the second largest weight of the spy. Um, maybe Apple's doing great. So it will help hold the spy. So if you take a look at, um, if any of you ever use Finviz, um, which is a really good uh, tool for you to go to. If Jim, you could show the Finviz there. Yep. Um, if you go to finviz.com, you guys can take a look here. There's a little map on the bottom right, and that map is in color. Okay, and it's broken down by the sectors, and it has basically all the green, all the red, and it kind of gives you a market sentiment of what is basically going What's, what's doing great and what's not doing so well. So if we were to look at the Finviz right now, we could see that Bank of America had a good day. Wells Fargo had a good day. Um, Apple actually had a good day. So did Nike. So did Amazon. But we can see that Facebook did not have a good day. We can see that um, GE had a good day. We also see Boeing had a very good day. So did Caterpillar. So you can see that it's broken down. So it shows you here the sectors, technology, the financial, the services, the consumer goods. So this is a really good way for you to see what's happening. Now, believe me, I've seen this heat map actually way more red than what I'm looking at right now. And it looks like healthcare seems red and consumer services and also technology. So you know, SPY was hurting just a bit. But again, if you want to get a feel for, you know, what is going on in the SPY, why, why is it like this today? Come here, look at this website, look at this colored little map, and it kind of gives you a feel for, you know, maybe certain stocks are making that happen. And also what's happening out in the, um, I guess, world news can also affect the behavior of some of these stocks too. So I hope that kind of explains it briefly. And I'll be happy to elaborate in future sessions. So, Jim, can you tell us um, what is happening with the, I guess, uh, support and resistance on the SPY chart, please? Yes. Now, this is a year's chart on the SPY. And what I'm seeing, we did have that huge sell-off that, that, that happened in December, the worst month of the year. The worst month that, that the markets ever had was December. And we had a high at this thing at 267 it dipped all the way down to 233 well i called this bottom with my crystal ball and i said 2019 is going to be a bounce on this thing and along with many other stocks and look what's happened we've had a nice little run it sometimes i've said it takes a stock can drop seven times faster than one can bounce and this is a good example of what i'm talking about See, almost seven exact days there, eight, you know, probably nine or ten days, this thing dropped almost from 30 bucks or more, $35. So that's huge. And then all of a sudden, the next two and a half months or the next two months, she's ran all the way up and hit that resistance level that we've seen. We've got four tops right here. We actually hit it one time and it pulled back a little bit and then it ran on up. And then, you know, how how this year how last year went 2018 so we've had we're on a four top area i'm going to bring this down and show you a, a, a 20-day chart that ain't going to do it for me so let me um yeah that'll do it for me 20-day chart and you can see how she's run up and we hit that top there at 281.31 281.31 now what i'm seeing now on this thing I'm going to erase this little circle here so it won't fog our heads. Remove drawing. And what I'm seeing now in the last three days is that top of 281.31. And every day since, which was um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we've had a pullback of, of lower highs. 
and also we've had lower lows on that situation. It's pulled back to a lower low, bounced up to uh, a lower high. We've had a lower low today. It bounced up to a lower high. So I think we're going to repeat this cycle. We're still going to be able to scalp it. But what you need to do is be patient for the first part of the day and see what how this market reacts. I mean, if, if it's in the red, wait for it to start turning green and then jump on in it. I have a low support here at 276. We've, we've hit that a couple of times and it's bounced up. So if each one of these trend lines is going to be in lower low. So if I was to draw a trend line on this thing right now, I'm going to magnify it up just a little bit. It's right about there. I'd say we maybe can come in here and see this thing down at 277.30 and bounce up to a previous high. And that previous high is going to be right around in this area of 278. 278.75. So this would be interesting to watch tomorrow. It can touch down to this 200 SMA at 277.76. But if it wants to repeat the cycle that it's in right now, it's going to have to go down to lower lows. And this is going to be the SPY. I still think it's in good shape, but I think it's starting to be in a small correction mode. And once we hit, I guess once all this news, uh, so I think that politics and the news can affect this stock also. And I think that's what happened today in the market with um, what, what we've been hearing, you know, in the news here just today. And I think we can bring this down a little bit more to support level, and that's going to be right around 277. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. We do have a solid support right now at 278.11, and that's going to be right in here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to put this in red. I think we can pull back to this 278 area. I'm going to dot that in red so I can remember that tomorrow when I'm looking at this chart. So that's my outlook on the SPY. I think we are going to create lower lows for a little bit. And then she's going to bounce right back up and hit that previous high that we've hit the last four times. So it is in correction mode. And that is the spy. Okay, Miss Vegas. All right. Well, you know what? I just want to thank everyone for following, liking, commenting. I really appreciate it. Jim appreciates it. And, you know, we're just really happy with um, the fact that, you know, people are trying the free trial and they're experiencing it for themselves, uh, especially – I want to say so many congratulations uh, to the people with small accounts that are actually trying to trade a little options, uh, which they're finding some good success with. And it's just such a rewarding feeling when people tell you that, you know, I don't have a lot to start with. I only have a few hundred dollars and I, you know, don't really, didn't really know where to start. I don't really know anything about options is what they were saying. And you know what? We're not option experts either. But we look at options based on money flow and we look at the charts and we try to be, you know, very selective of the ones that we share. And, you know, the mission really is to help people. And it's really nice to see that a lot of the ideas we do share uh, are working. And sometimes, unfortunately, they don't. And it's okay. That's part of trading. Not every trade is green, green, green. But it's important to cut losses for sure and to position size accordingly. So I just want to thank everyone. And for those of you that are listening, that have visited our website, the link is in the information of the video. Feel free to come, come check it out. We're almost March 1st on Friday. I can't believe the month is almost over. And we're just so excited for what, uh, what what's going to happen to even tomorrow. Like I just look forward to trading tomorrow. So every day is in a new day. But every day is an exciting day, and when the markets are red, like Jim says, we try to be green. So I love stocks, and but I love options too. All right. Well, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is February the 27th, 2019, and we love stocks. Thank you.